Hi guys, today I have a video for you which is all about palettes I regret purchasing. I'm about to do a declutter on my palettes. Um, I'm doing a declutter on my whole collection, but I'm about to do palettes and I figured I would get this video out of the way first because there are certain palettes here that I just kind of like want to talk about, want to discuss, want to go over with you guys, tell you why I don't like them. Some things are personal preference, some things are a quality issue, and I will get into that with each and every one. Let's just jump right in, no big preamble. I will just tell you about a few palettes I regret purchasing just for kind of the color selection. I think they're not really very, ink they're not very complete palettes. Um, the first one I think is still available, although I did buy it in 2015. It, I think it's limited edition, but it just hasn't sold out yet. Anyway, it's the Laura Mercier Daring by Day Eye and Cheek Color Palette. So the packaging is really nice. It's like thick cardboard. It is magnetic. It's got a big mirror on it. And that's what you get inside. So you get a blush, a highlight, and six shadows. The blush and highlight I actually really, really do like. This is one of my favorite blushes ever, and I do have it in a single. Um, this is in the shade Lotus Pink. And that's what that looks like. Really, really beautiful. By the way, I'm not going to swatch everything. That would take forever, but I will swatch a few, you know, shadows here and there. The problem with this palette is that it's just, you know, it's six shadows. It's hard to get a complete look out of these six shadows. These two browns here are very, very similar in tone. Um, you do have a nice kind of matte brow bone shade and it is like good quality. This whole palette is good quality. There's nothing wrong with the quality. It's just that there's no transition shade to blend out with. The lid shades like these two, like I said, are very similar. So I just don't like it for that. I just don't use it very often. I do try to use it here and there just to get some use out of it. The next one is another limited edition palette from Buxom. This came out 2015 holiday as well. I really love Buxom eyeshadows. Like they're great quality, but again, I think they just like sometimes they miss the mark on putting together something that's a complete palette. You can customize their eyeshadows. They can buy their customizable palettes and those are really good. This is called the look all you want eyeshadow palette. Reason I don't like this is basically because of this green, this purple, and this white shade here. Now this is actually a holographic duochrome eyeshadow and it's so weird. You can't use this as a brow bone highlight. It's like violet and purple. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful eyeshadow on its own, but as a cohesive palette, this just does not work. And then these two shadows here, the purple and the green, I just feel like when you combine those together, you're just getting this real kind of throwback to the 90s vibe, and it just doesn't work together. The green I did use once all over my lid on its own as a whole look, and it was really beautiful. So again, no problem with the quality of Buxom. I just don't like that palette as a whole. Next one, you know, some people might hate me for this, but you know, it's my money and I spent a lot on this one and I really regret it. This is a Marc Jacobs, The Dreamer. Um, this is what it looks like. There's your shades. What I don't like is that so many of them are very similar to each other. Like these two here, for example, are kind of very similar lid shades. You do have a very nice chocolatey brown right in the middle, which I enjoy. And you have some nice lighter shades here. But the thing of it is, everything is kind of the same. In this and they are really lacking in pigmentation a lot there's your four swatches right there can you even see them <laughs> it's really hard to tell whenever I use this palette the look that I come out with looks like something I could have gotten from a drugstore palette and it's not that these shadows are bad it's just that for the price it is just totally not worth it this is like $70 in Canada which is ridiculous you can get way better at the drugstore than that from Marc Jacobs which is saying something some of the first high-end eyeshadows I ever purchased were these two sets from Benefit these are called the world famous neutrals I think there's actually a third one if I remember right um, but this is the most glamorous nudes ever this is the sexiest nudes ever I do think the packaging on these is just divine I mean look at these girls they are so beautiful they're supposed to look like books you know you can sit them up on your shelf they're so cute like Nobody can say Benefit does packaging badly. And again, I'm not going to say the quality of these is terrible, but I don't enjoy these palettes for a few reasons. My problem with these shadows here, these the quality of these four here are not the greatest. They're, it's kind of lacking in pigmentation. It's kind of pretty, but it kind of doesn't really work once you get it on the lid. They do come with these cream shadows, but the cream shadows are all very dark. And when I'm using a cream shadow, usually I want to 
brighter one underneath for a base i don't know that's just kind of personal preference but i just think for the price again it's just how many neutral like eyeshadow quads do you own that cost you forty dollars probably not many um the price tag is just kind of way out there for what you're actually getting here and so that's why i regret it it's not again not the worst quality in the world although this one is lacking pigmentation more so than this one this one i actually really love this shade right here which is called blingo which is stunning silvery shade it's really really beautiful um and so i do like that but again i don't really like this whole palette because who's gonna use like a dark smoky quartz colored cream shadow not me that could possibly just be personal preference on my part but again it's it's my regrets and i do regret buying those but let's talk about drugstore palettes for a second because i really do love a lot of eyeshadows from the drugstore you guys know like i just have a love for makeup i don't really differentiate most of the time between high-end and drugstore like i just love what i love um but these from the drugstore i think are terrible and i think you should not waste your money on them starting with this one this is the nyx butt naked turn the other cheek palette now i think there's a just a butt naked one and then this is kind of version two i will say the packaging on this is actually pretty great for drugstore so you have this nice big mirror that stands up on its own you have your shadows there and then you have this drawer that slides out that has all these cheek products in it this here is awful um these highlights are all so powdery and chalky and just terrible the ugh, it really these two aren't even really highlights they're more just like peach just very kind of peach <laughs> but this one here which should be like a nice light highlight on most skin tones it's just pure chalk the blushes here these two that have shimmer in them are actually not that bad they're not the greatest but they're not bad these two mattes Again, just chalk, they go away by the end of the day on your face. Um, you know, if this was great, I might give it a pass, but this is not good either. I actually used this way back in the beginning of 2016 in a video just dedicated only to this product. I'll link it if you want, but you know, I wouldn't even bother. It's kind of the same review. This is just lacking in pigmentation, muddy, like it just muddies up on your eye. You get no differentiation at all and they just don't blend. And I really, really dislike this palette intensely. Um, another one that I feel like was a huge letdown and doesn't blend kind of the same, kind of very similar formula is this palette from Sleek. This is the Eye Divine palette in O Natural 601. I think this is a UK brand. I got this off Amazon. Again, packaging, not bad. Like Sleek is in the name. The packaging is very sleek. It has this big mirror that can stand up. These shadows don't blend. I tried using this for an entire month in my Bought It For Got It series and I just every time I reached for it, I just dreaded it because all of these shadows just wouldn't blend. I, I really, really hated it. Even like the nice, which should be like shimmery lid shades, they just like that doesn't even show up. So again, I've heard good things about this brand as a whole. I would be willing to try other palettes because I've heard like from people I respect that really like these shadows, but this one, the Own Natural one, no, it's just a big fat pass for me. CoverGirl came out with these palettes. Um, they're supposed to be like kind of knockoffs of the Urban Decay palettes. This one is the Roses. I don't own the Goldens and the Nudes. I do own the new Jewel ones though, the ones that just came out. I did a whole video review on those and those ones are okay. These ones I don't like for a couple reasons. I actually think they did a really good job in terms of color selection. I like the range, I like the mixture of mattes and shimmers. These shadows when they first go on are actually really nice. Like if I were to swatch these, you would think that they're pigmented, they're beautiful. Like look at that, those are two beautiful lid shades. Um, there's a little bit of fallout, but nice, right? The problem I have with this palette is just that it doesn't last. So within a couple hours it's just all muddied on your eyelid again like it doesn't look like you really did anything if you spent 20 minutes blending out your shadow and you get a beautiful look out of it two hours later nobody's gonna know because it's just all kind of 
blended away. It's just all blended into itself. It's all muddied up. So I don't like that for that reason. The Jewel Tone Palette kind of does the same thing, but because the colors in that palette are so different from each other, like you have a intense blue, an intense purple, a, a Jewel Tone Green, like they're all very different that it's not as bad. Do you know what I mean? Whereas because these are all very similar tonally, they kind of meld into each other a lot more easily and that's what happens. So today on my eyes, just in case you're wondering about a beautiful purple that's going to do you wonders, I did get this in my Beautylish box. Um, this is the Natasha Denona Eyeshadow Palette 5. It's the number 10. And I really, really, really like this. I find purples are very difficult to do. And that, I'm mentioning that because of this. Um, these came out last year, I wanna say spring or summertime. This is the L'Oreal Color Riche Eyeshadow Quad. Now this is not a palette, but I still, I really wanted to talk about it for this reason. So when you look at these in the pan, they look like intense, beautiful purple shadows. When these first came out, I did swatch them in the store. Um, you know, there was already one that was open and messed with, so I took that opportunity to swatch it in the store. And I didn't like it. I didn't think it was very pigmented. And then I watched a few people do videos where they mentioned these and they talked about how great they were. So I figured, oh great, I'll get it, I'll try it out. No, no. These are just like I thought. They're not pigmented. They are just, like, look at that and look at this. It's not the same <laughs> and they can't really be built up. So I really do dislike this. I really regret purchasing it. I was on the hunt for a beautiful purple over the last year and this is way better. Now granted, granted the price tag here is so much higher than this and I get that. But still this was like here in Canada, I want to say something like 11 or $12. And that is not a small chunk of change. You know, some people spend an hour working um, to make that much money and the thing of it is like the reason I'm doing this video to begin with is because not Everybody has like gobs and gobs of money to buy a whole bunch of stuff to test out Most of you like to research before you buy I don't do that not because I have gobs of money to waste But because I just love testing things and you know bringing you guys my opinion. That's just That's what I like doing here on my channel. So I kind of sacrifice my money in that way so that I can test things for you. But I know that there are people who save up to buy these things and it sucks when you're disappointed. Now that being said, if there's anything here that you absolutely love that I'm kind of trashing on it, um, I'll say the same thing I've said in previous regrets videos. I actually am very happy for you that you love what you bought because that means you didn't waste your money and you know, that makes me happy. I don't like it when my money is wasted and I'm sure you don't either. So if you love something that I hate, that's great. You know, I'm not here to trash things. And also all these brands make things that I love too. So, you know, there's, I'm not trashing any of these brands as a whole. They all make things that I think are amazing. These just happen to be things that I don't think are amazing. So kind of talking about not wasting your money, I wanted to leave these two particular palettes for the end because they are super expensive. Um, this one is the Stila Eyes Are the Window to the Spirit palette. Now they have like three or four in this particular grouping. The packaging on this is beautiful. Like it's so reflective, it's like rose gold, it stands up, it's got this huge mirror. Here's your shadows inside. They look like they're gorgeous. Now, I think the only good one in this whole palette is Stila Kitten, and we all know Stila Kitten is a beautiful shade. But the rest of this palette is so lacking in pigmentation, I never, ever, ever use this. You know, I used it at one point last year for a, for a palette of the month, and it was like forcing myself to use it that month because I just, I really did not like it. Here's a swatch of that burgundy there and that slate blue. I don't see a slate blue and I certainly don't see a burgundy. Um, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you know, sometimes people like a sheer wash of color on their eye. And you know, a lot of the times more mature people tend to like that and they don't want boldly pigmented looks. And I get that, I really do. I just don't think that for a $60 palette, like a shade like this burgundy here should translate into that when you swatch it. I really, really don't. So big fail in my opinion on this one. I'm not gonna say I got a dud. I'm just gonna say this to me is just a bad product that Stila manufactured. And again, it makes me angry because I wasted my money on it and I feel like 
again, some people want to save up for a palette like that and this is what they're going to end up with. I just don't think that's right. So I left for last one that I think is not very good. Now a lot of people love it and there could be reasons why we have differing opinions, but let's just talk about it. So this is the Naked 3. I really intensely dislike this palette and I've tried to love it. You know, I haven't purchased any of these with the intent on hating them. Um, I really wanted to love this when I got it. I love rose golds. I love pinks. I really do. I'm just trying to take the brush out. And so this really appeals to me, this range of colors here. Um, but whenever I use this, I just find it's so muddied. I feel like, you know, I keep using that word muddied, but what I mean is it just looks like you took one eyeshadow and put it all over your lid. It doesn't look like you built up dimension. It doesn't look like you spent your time like trying to craft something beautiful. Um, it just looks like all one and the same, like a wash of color all over your lid that's kind of like, it's just a whole lot of nothing. And that's what I usually feel like when I get this palette out and I try to use it. For example, this shade right here, Trick, is the one I always gravitate to because it's this beautiful shiny peach shade in the palette. And yet, when I swatch it, like look at look at that it's just so lacking and that's a heavy swatch on my hand and you know that going in with a brush is not going to be even as intense as this is so when you try to put it on your lid it just doesn't show up which is super disappointing um now what i will say is i have a skin tone that is kind of like light medium you know it's definitely not fair in most people's use of that word it's more light medium and i have an olive undertone the people that i've seen especially on youtube that absolutely adore this palette are people that are very very fair with a pink undertone and i think maybe maybe it just works on people that have a different skin tone than me i am willing to consider that possibility because i have heard you know lots of people with that skin tone say that they adore this palette and that's cool Again, different strokes for different folks. I'm actually gonna pass this on to my niece, I already told her I would, who has very, very fair skin with a pink undertone. And I really hope that she loves it. That is my roundup of all of my palette regrets. If you feel like you intensely need to leave me hate comments because of this in the comments below, that's your prerogative. But again, like I said, if you own some of these and you love them, and I am sincerely happy for you. They just don't work for me and I think I've kind of run through my reasons why. So I hope that you found this information valuable. If you did, um, give this video a thumbs up. That does help me out. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. I would love to see you around in my future videos. And that's it for today. So I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.